Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to call this meeting of the Lee County Board of Commissioners to order and welcome everybody here on kind of a steamy Lee County afternoon. Thank you for being here and joining us. Um, at this time, I would like to ask Commissioner Kirk Smith if he would offer an invocation for us and lead us in the pledge, please. Heavenly Father, we are living in trying times. We have at the local level young men indiscriminately killing each other. We have our law enforcement is now the target of others. We seek your protection. We seek your protection for those men and women in the uniform of this nation, as well as those law enforcement officers, first responders, our firefighters, and emergency rescue personnel. We ask for the guidance of grief, of the goodness of your heart. We ask for the, the knowledge and the wisdom for the actions that we are as a board will conduct today. We ask this in the name of your son, most holy, precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to call your attention to the agenda. Any additional items for the agenda? I'd like to offer one, if you could add for item E under new business, just a discussion about a community meeting. Um, I've been asked by a couple of uh, citizens and a group um, for us to participate in a community meeting just with all of the things going on in the country as Commissioner Smith referenced in his prayer. Um, so again, uh, item E, new business, just to share that with um, the rest of the board and get your uh, guidance. Um, any more additional items? Uh, motion to approve. Hello. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, the approval of consent agenda. Madam Chair, I move we approve the consent agenda. Okay, any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, moving into public comments this afternoon. Um, first, we have Ms. Keeley Wood. Welcome. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> My name is Keely Wood. I live on Angel Road in Sanford, Lee County. Since January, I've been communicating with the EPA concerning the hexavalent chromium con contamination in the colon community. The EPA has asked the DEQ departments to be involved. First, it was the state Superfund department, then it was shifted to the underground storage tank section. Now I'm asking questions from the section chief with waste management. I have a few copies of the most correspondence I will share with you, and I can also email this to you. I originally gave them information on the Cherokee brick making <coughs> in the 1980s using tainted soils. As you can see, they contacted General Shale, and I don't think they contacted anyone who worked there at the time. Otherwise, they have would have learned a lot more. Um, I keep on asking questions but it might have more traction if you can inquire on the source of the hexavalent chromium-6. We still don't have an answer, and I will show you the map where, where it specifically <coughs> is. On another point, uh, we want to let you know that the water testing of the five filters that we installed is still in review. Some of the results are back and some are not. Uh, we would like to know where the air monitor that was set on Blackstone Road for baseline air testing is. Um, that was installed, gosh, over three years ago. Um, the state has not reported any tests on their website for many months, and this air monitor could be relocated in the colon community uh, now for baseline testing, or even put it downtown for where the uh, two to three trains are coming down every day with the, uh, the, with the um, coal ash trains. And that's it. Thank you. 
can't write as fast as you can talk, Keely. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's see. Okay, so Okay, so we'll get we'll get this out. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Dan Wood. Hi there. For all Hi. of y'all don't know, my name is Dan Wood. I just rotated off the Environmental Advisory Board. Y'all can get my phone number from there. I was tasked with finding out where the source of this hexavalent chromium is that was in the water, and is it natural or is it not? Is it man-made? And I can tell you, after researching it, looking at the patterns, how it dis uh, dissipates, there is no way that this hexavalent chromium is natural. It's in the middle of a sedimentary posit deposit. I think this young fellow right here sent us all out a, a nice little primer from the American Water Works Association. Right in there it specifically says, hexavalent chromium is always associated with igneous rock, meaning the nearest source is over by the quarry. Water can't go underground uphill under a river and up two miles away. And that's what we're having to say happen if, if we're believing that. Because of that, not being able to understand how that process worked, I went out and actually went to the neighborhood and looked to try to see where these sites are in the dispersal pattern because it didn't make sense to me. It looked like the contamination had only happened two or three years ago. When I got over there, I started talking to the neighbors and they talked about how General Shell Brick cleared off an area, you can see it on the Google Earth, between two ponds. When they cleared off this area and scraped off, dust from this operation blew across this area. If you go look at the lay of the land, and if you've ever been around a construction site where dust is blowing, I'm sure you have, Doc, <laughs> you know that it follows the low-lying areas and goes around the hills. It matched up perfectly with where we found the coal ash, I mean the hexavalent chromium. After that, that led me to the conclusion, what in the world could have happened there that would have spread that, and what's in it? And then I got a local person that lived there in that area that talked about they had pigs and chickens and dogs die within a week of this dust blowing. Nobody ever investigated it. That means there's something there a whole lot more dangerous than hexavalent chromium. What I'm asking you guys to consider tonight, if we let Chara go ahead and start stripping. That's not a couple of weeks worth of clearing off a little area for another brick pit or brick clay pit. We're talking about they're going to move dirt across that whole area. We've never tested anything over there. We don't know what's there. We've never run a complete comprehensive test on the water. All we've done is checked a few analytes. From what we know right now, there could be something so toxic that's insoluble in water that was in that dust that it could take lives. I, for one, care about my neighbors in the Colon community. I hope you do. And what I want you to do as a governing body is to please encourage the EPA to do a full investigation and identify the chemicals that are, that are there. We could do one single well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Karen Wood? Hey, good evening. Um, Dan is my husband, and he was hired by Duke um, Energy to be the environmental compliance inspector. Sorry, I messed up the microphone. <laughs> the environmental okay. compliance inspector for the Belews Creek cleanup site. Um, he got out there the first day and had an allergic reaction to the chemicals there. He has a uh, chemical, desens uh, chemical sensitization, which we have evidence of. He was told he could not work there because in the 40s and 50s, these chemicals were sprayed on these coal ash plants. This um, shop oils and these types of things were put on these coal ash pits and my husband was told he couldn't work there. We live half a mile from the Colon site. We live, one of our property lines is the train track. We went and talked with Chara, we went and talked with Duke. We had a two hour interview with Chara where their representative told, and I'm reading from the transcript from that meeting here, he says, um, so it seems to me like you're talking about this something that's airborne, is that correct? That's Mr. McGrath. Dan answered, I would assume that yes, and if that's fumes or particles, I don't know. If that's particles, it's a real problem. Mr. McGrath, why do you say that's a real problem? His answer, because the hexavalent chromium in the coal ash has a problem to breathe hexavalent chromium. Mr. McGrath agrees and says, right. He then goes on to say, and I'm just thinking that if this is a particle problem, 
Could there be some kind of barrier erected between the tracks and your house that would prevent the particles from getting to you? Would that be a solution? Is that a solution for downtown Sanford when these same trains are running through? The EPA did a test in 2014, gave results that said these coal ash fugitive emissions can go tens of miles. Okay, so tens, let's, let's say that's not true. Let's say half of that, five miles. Do you work there? Do you live there within five miles of those train tracks? We do. We have people that are sick now that will die now Generations will die later if this coal ash is continued being brought down our tracks dry. There's already erosion control issues at the Brickhaven site. If you don't get to control on this now, what's happening there is going to happen in Lee County. Not only will it be in the water again, which is what they're doing at Brickhaven, it's also in the air. You cannot move this dry, period. When they have trains that are 100 trains long and they're sitting there all day long, I don't care if they leave wet, it's not going to be there wet, and they're not moving it wet. Their own videos on the Duke Energy coal ash management site had a video of the first truck at Brickhaven, and a plume of dust came out. At this meeting, we were told that couldn't be at Brickhaven. We sent them the video, which was from Duke. And not only was it the video, it was the first truck. And if you see a plume of dust where coal ash is, that's bad. It's 16 times smaller than E. coli. Think about that. Think about that. 16 times smaller than Eco Life. You see a plume, you're done. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Thank you. Um, Ms. Elsie Stovall. Good afternoon. Yes, I'm Elsie Stovall. Thank you. I don't have much to say. I think I said most of it at the other meeting. Ma but I can we get your address just, just for the public record? 1909 Tramway Road. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. No, and go ahead. I've lived out there about 62 years. And I hope y'all all consider us that live out on Tramway Road, the traffic, and all the schools and everything, and consider helping us out on that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Debbie Hall. I'm not going to touch the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Debbie. We may need to work on that a little bit. <laughs> I'm Debbie Hall, 957 Cumnock Road, Sanford, North Carolina. Uh, I'm here, first of all, representing the Cumnock community. Uh, I'm their elected representative. Not really. <laughs> we in Cumnock want to thank you again for the moratorium on oil and gas development because it would mean so much tragedy in our community if that were to happen. We, we are hoping that no changes that would open the door to new possibly hazardous exploits will be entertained as you look at this. And we really do appreciate what you've done so far. Thank you for caring about us. Now I'm here in, in to, to invite you to National Night Out August the 2nd, Camelback Bridge in the Cumnock community. This gentleman right over here can tell you how important that is. We have a community watch there. And with everything that's going on right now, I think it's, it is such a good time to support our law enforcement and our communities. And we're looking forward to it. 6 o'clock, Tuesday, August the 2nd. Hot dogs, it'll be good. My third invitation. We're asking you to go across the river into Chatham County. E. Lee, Environmental Lee, is sponsoring a concert at the Roadhouse in Pittsburgh. If you've not been there, it's great, great food. Faith Bardell will do a concert. It's at 6.30. We are having a silent auction. That is August the 4th on a Thursday night. And I brought you all flyers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Tom Oxholm. Madam Chair, if you are, if I speak at the 6 p.m. public hearing, instead of now. Uh, um, sure. Whichever, that, that, whichever is more appropriate. No, the public hearing is fine. That's, that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> All right. That's the end of the public comments. Thank you very much. Right now we'll go into the old business. 
with our first item on page 42, the planning board recommenda recommendation for an amendment to the Lee County zoning map. Ms. McNeil, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This afternoon I have a recommendation from the Lee County Planning Board regarding an application by Mr. Torbillo Hernandez to rezone from Residential Agricultural RA to a conditional zoning district to be known as Sanford Soccer Field Complex, an 8.75 acre portion of a larger 9.95 acre tract off of Airport Road formerly addressed as 2917 Airport Road. A joint public hearing was held on June 20th with several adjoining property owners and citizens speaking in opposition to this request. Items of concern included the high volume of vehicular and pedestrian traffic along Tramway Road and possibly along the railroad tracks, which could potentially be hazardous, and the bright lights and noise generated by the sporting events at the nearby schools and potentially by the new soccer facility. The Lee County Planning Board voted to approve, they recommended rather, to approve the rezoning request with the conditions that no alcohol be served or allowed on the site, that signs be posted stating no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons allowed, and I need to verbally add, and I apologize, this wasn't included, but it was indeed in the minutes, that security be in attendance at all non-practice games. The board also included within their motion a recommendation that NCDOT consider requiring a turn lane or stacking lane on Tramway Road when entering Airport Road from the south as part of the approval for phase one. Now for your reference, I would like to tell you that a joint public hearing was also held on June 21st with the Sanford City Council and the Sanford Planning Board for the portion of the site located within the City of Sanford's ETJ. Several property owners and citizens spoke in opposition, voicing basically the same concerns as expressed at the Lee County public hearing. And several citizens spoke in favor of the project, citing the existing Sanford soccer indoor soccer business that Mr. Hernandez operates as an example of how he would operate the new facility if approved. The Sanford Planning Board tabled their recommendation and instructed staff to research the existing and possible future vehicular and pedestrian traffic issues in this area based on current conditions and conditions associated with this project. Any future plans that NCDOT may have for the area, including road widening, crosswalks, etc., and the possible reduction of the speed limit in this area, a concern noted by a councilman at the public hearing, and to provide information to the board at the next meeting to be held on July 19th, which is tomorrow evening. Are there any questions regarding the Lee County Planning Board's recommendation on this rezoning request? I've got one. Would you yes, repeat why the City of, of Sanford Planning Board delayed what they're requesting again? Yes, sir. They wanted additional information yeah. to help them in making their recommendation, and they instructed staff to research the existing and possible future vehicular and pedestrian right. traffic issues in the area based on current conditions and conditions associated with this project. Any future plans that DOT may have for this area, including road widening, crosswalks, etc., and the possible reduction of the speed limit in this area. Okay. When is that information due? Tomorrow night, I will present what information I have to the Sanford Planning Board, but I will tell you that um, I had a meeting with NCDOT, right. in addition with our long-range planner, David Montgomery, and our director, Marshall Downey, and DOT says it's going to take time, possibly 30 to 60 days, to pull this type of information together, <coughs> and they actually said more accurate information um, would probably be available September or October, because that's when the school is in session. That information, would that include information uh, considering the turn lane? Would that be part of that information? The discussion I have with DOT is basically the same as when the project was reviewed um, by our technical review committee, and that said at the final phase, phase three, is when DOT would require the turn lane. The developer, of course, is free to put this in during any point in the process, but they're going to require it in the final phase, which is phase three. Did they offer an explanation? They felt that, that it needed to be installed at maximum build out, and that was the final phase. Is there any, any problems uh, to get that turning lane in phase one? Would that I, be a problem? I believe, as per an email that I received, that the applicant has indicated that the cost of the turn lane, um, that it might not be feasible for him to install that within phase one. 
uh, but there are project representatives here this evening if you prefer to speak with them. I would like to, to know what kind of time frame you're talking about kind of phase three. It's market driven, uh -huh. so it may be months, it may be years. It might be years, that's right. Yes, sir. Price is always going up on that term rate. Typically. <laughs> Back. Yeah, I, yes, because I want to know, can it possibly be put in phase one? All right. the so, you, would you like to speak to that? Yes, yeah, if you please. would just come up to the mic so everybody can hear. Hi, welcome. Thank you for being here. Hi. Um, thanks for having us back. Uh, I'm Joseph Kovic, the architect for the project. Uh, the In speaking with the um, client of the project, he said that uh, it's not possible for him to put it in the turn lane in after we got really rough uh, estimates of how much the turn lane would actually cost and the progression of this plan is entirely driven on the success of the business um, so after phase two he made it note noted that it, he sh he predicts that that amount of money could be invested in the turn lane at that moment when they uh, turn on phase three. So there is a possibility that the turning lane may not come to fruition. He has full intentions of completing this master plan. Okay. Um, so it, it is a priority in the final phase. Now, my full intention is to be a millionaire next month. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm going to make it or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, so um, what he's, I think what he's trying to say is, is that if business doesn't succeed, he's put a lot of money in the uh, terminal, right? I understand that. Yeah. But that makes sense to me, too. But, but uh, I, I'm concerned about that turning lane, really am, and the, and the traffic there. So I just wanted to find out what the potentials were. All right. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> well, while you're standing there, will you explain what phase one will consist of and phase two? Sure. Um, phase one, can I? Uh, phase one will uh, consist of the full build out of the parking lot, the two seven versus seven soccer fields, the two buildings um, along the left border, the septic field, uh, fencing around the entire perimeter of the property, uh, pedestrian fencing that is, um, and a, it will include a dumpster, but in the, this isn't an updated drawing as per uh, the last public hearing. We heard that the dumpster location was a problem, so since then we put it inside of the building uh, to keep it from the neighbor's uh, backyards. And it will include the vegetative buffer around all areas that doesn't have a strong natural vegetative buffer right. already in existence. Okay. Phase two will include the open 11 versus 11 fields, the, or the one open 11 versus 11 field, the three five versus five smaller fields in the rear of the site, uh, the continuation of the perimeter fence around the entire property, and a circulation pedestrian path um, across the site and leaving the, the fields. Okay. So technically, phase one will pretty much dictate whether you go into phase two or not. Yes. Yes, right. absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank you. turn is a turn lane and simply because if you're coming from the south there's a turn lane out there if you're coming from the north or the west or the east but you don't have a turn lane coming from the south and if it's going to take a, a lot of participation in order to keep this thing moving I feel you got a safety issue there I really do. Project managers or the staff? I 
I would like to see what the future DOT plans are. Based on that, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we table this to the next meeting and do a little looking into what the DOT is going to do and what we got forward, look forward there. Discussion or questions on that? We're, we're getting the same thing that the city's requesting. Yeah. Yes, sir. Comes in, yeah. I, and, and I will say to the public that's sitting here, you know, both sides of the issue. Um, I, I know I was out of town this weekend, and if you called and I haven't got back to you or answered your email, I apologize. I'm, I've been trying all day to catch up. Um, uh, but we have um, gotten a lot of emails and phone calls uh, and text messages over the last three days. Um, I know I, for one, have more questions today, and I thought I had done all my homework. I, do, I did talk to some citizens. I've been out there um, uh, myself watching traffic and, and um, taking notes and been out to the site multiple times. Um, but again, I, I, I would really be interested in that as well. I know, and thank you to Mr. Downey. He had great patience with me on Friday <laughs> with me asking a lot of questions before I had to get out of town. Um, so, I, no, go ahead, Robert. I, I go just ahead. wonder, while you're dealing with DOT, I'd like to know from them specifically, and I understand what they're saying. You put it in the phase three as if, if it's successful question is, do we really need the turn lane, or is that their call, if you follow what I'm asking? Sure. I'll ask them to, um, um, to take a look at it and see if, the, see if this is something they, well, I will tell you, they, they said it was required based on the information provided okay. in the site plan, yeah. that but, it would be. But this is one of my questions, too, and one of the reasons why I I'm uncomfortable. I just feel like I don't have enough knowledge to vote tonight. Is my <coughs> recollection is that on the TARPO plan, the 78 widening is within the next 10 years, perhaps. I, I, I still can't. And, and uh, Marshall, if you want to come up here too, because uh, I forgot to ask you that on Friday, I, I, I have not had a chance to go back and, and go through my notes. But for Mr. Hernandez, you know, if they're going to four lane it in five years, does that make sense for him to spend his money, you know, Certainly. to do a turn? I mean, it's, there's just a lot out there right now, I think. Yeah, and that is one of the things certainly we would be looking at. I believe, um, I, I don't remember, to be honest with you, right in front of me, but I want to say it was either. seven years, maybe it was seven to ten years. Okay. It might be a reasonable forecast for that. Certainly it is something that is um, being looked at. I don't think that they said a construction should it will be up for that. So okay. is it coming? Yes, but do we know for sure? I don't, I don't think I know, and I, and I tried to get in touch with somebody today and just in between phone calls wasn't able to, to get them. But I was thinking when we did the last breakdown and um, ranked, right. you know, the, the different projects that the 78 was in that, you know, now to 2026. It certainly was on the Monday. list. But okay. I, yeah, but then the question begs is how does it score and get on that STI? Exactly, that with the step, right, exactly, exactly. So right now we don't have a timeline on four lane or any kind of idea on how long it's going to be. That, well, that's, that's, that's their meeting uh, right now. Well, I think that's part of what we would get with DOT. Um, sure. That's a problem I have, you know, you're talking about phase one. If it's not profitable, then you won't see phase three. So here we have the citizens out there with no turn lane. It's a, it's a traffic. It is. A traffic it, and it very much goes back to the issue of, of, of the timing of the project and the timing of, of the private sector improvement. Right. Right. Okay. So just, just to let the public know, you know, we're, we're trying to get all these answers so we can make as an informed decision as we possibly can. So if we could, could... Would it be possible at the same time, Marshall, to ask them to um, give an example of what a turn lane would look like there? Because I've been out there and there is a middle third lane and I've made the assumption that that would suffice for a turn lane. So I think I was um, incorrect in my assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, the, their mean, definition and our definition are two different things. Yeah, you've had mm -hmm. two, yeah, you've had. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. To some degree, we have a little bit yeah. that you could take a look at that. Um, certainly, now this would just be a spot improvement for this right. project, as opposed to what you would be so doing, which would be the entire. Right. Marshall, am I wrong to assume they have a right of way now that they want to put the turn lane? I believe that's what this is showing. Um, again, I apologize, I haven't been in the I, great I discussion. Ms. McNeil might could answer that question more yeah, so than have. Could you also, Marshall, get us some time, some kind of time frame of the uh, the four lane project? Certainly, I think that's that's what Chair Dalrymple was referring to. We would certainly try to look at that. The, the real question is, is I don't believe that's been put in the uh, stiff yet, but I may be wrong. So we just have to take a look. Okay. I do know they were they were meeting in July. I'm thinking this week or next week. I believe I just saw Matt sent some updates right. out, and I didn't get a chance to get into that. Right. See, I came I'm, I'm the same way. So I mean, that that's another reason why. You know, we'll, we'll get our, hopefully we'll get a better idea of when our project timetable in the county is this week or next week. I have a quick question. Do you know how many people in phase one, if everything goes well, how many people will be there at any given time? Um, well, per the um, seven versus seven soccer games, you take about 11 to 14 per team and then some spectators. Uh, so maybe you'd say spectators plus staff, um, roughly. The staff is probably already there. They've probably been there all day. Yeah, so that, that would be maybe five. So um, say you have a couple teams of uh, four teams, 11 each. That's 44. Um, half that for spectators. So maybe 70. And then and, and take into account, um, well, that carpooling usually is going to occur in yeah. some form or fashion when you have teams and families coming to the game. Okay. I have one more question sure. regarding Airport Road. Will there be any changes made to that? That's a very narrow strip in there. Correct. It is a narrow road, and no changes were required to Airport Road. We got emergency training vehicles going in, yes, and sir. they have the need for emergency vehicles to go in, and they're not going to make any adjustments on it. No, that sir. is really interesting. I can express that concern to them. I would hope. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I missed that one. That's a good question. Okay. There's a motion on the floor to table this until our August meeting when hopefully we'll have more information from DOT and, and from staff um, on some of the questions. And and I'll get back into my emails and get back with, with you folks, uh, with staff, and, and some of the notes I have from phone calls, and I know the other commissioners will too. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. We've got some more work to do on this. Yeah, one other thing. Mm -hmm. While you're talking about this, ask them if they'll give you an estimation on what the turn lane would cost. I believe we have that information. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next item is on page 52. Consider an ordinance to amend the unified development ordinance. Um, yeah. I was looking for David. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm stepping in. You're for stepping it. in. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, as uh, Madam Chair uh, Downwardful indicated, this is an amendment uh, to the Unified Development Ordinance. It does begin on page 52 of your packet. Um, you may recall this item was presented at public hearing at, uh, at your June meeting with the Planning Commission. Um, really, this is something that would affect the county, but not in a, in, a, in a major way. This is essentially an item that was brought forward to us based on some uh, situations we were dealing with primarily in the downtown areas and the business districts of both Jonesboro and Sanford. You may recall Mr. Montgomery indicated to you this would simply add more flexibility to have, to have signage for those situations where downtown businesses, because they typically aren't, they don't, they're, they're storefronts, so they have, they, a lot of times they open on the sides and rear to alleys and to parking lots, and this would add more flexibility for them to do that. Um, this item was um, um, discussed by the planning board and it was unanimously recommended to you for consideration of adoption. I would point out, as I said, uh, the county, the neighborhood commercial would be really the only district that this would affect for you. And, and the, the example I always think of is uh, the area down near Lemon Springs. Um, but again, most likely, 
the county is such that you don't have a lot of alleys and things like that. So it's, it's probably not going to come into play that often. However, just want to point that out. Right? And I'll pause there if there's any questions. Any questions? Okay, we have a motion to approve. Any more discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, um, the consider ordinance to amend the UDO, um, Ms. Althea Thompson. Mm -hmm. Hey, good, good evening, afternoon. Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners. Evening. You may recall a third public hearing on June 20th to consider a tax amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance to add a definition of yard sale and to clarify that yard sales are permitted as an accessory use for residential dwelling. The planning board by unanimous vote recommend that the amendment be approved as presented. Okay, have a motion. Any questions for discussion? I will take up the issue of removing those signs off of the... The planning department. Okay. If we get a violation or a call that signs are out that should not be out, we will address that. Okay. In our uh, violation section of the ordinance. Has there been a problem in the past with yard sales? People having perpetual yard sales? Well, yeah, one of my neighbors had a year round. Yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, take a residential <laughs> property and make it commercial. Madam <laughs> Chair, I happened to be driving through Drumsboro a few days ago, and there was somebody that obviously was a professional, had a trailer set up right there across from the Jonesboro Baptist Church, one of the houses there, right in the front yard, during the middle of the week. So, I mean, I saw them loading it up on Friday. Well, it was a yard yeah. sale. <laughs> it's a yard sale of having a sale out it's of the mobile yard sale. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's one of the issues that Broadway Council was talking about was the fact that out there in the, uh, where the intersection of Broadway Road and 421 is it perpetually set out there, and that's mm -hmm. state property. Mm -hmm. But it's still an eyesore, it's still a disruption of traffic. It's, it's, a, it's a hazard. Right. And it, it's. it's painful for the neighbors because if you're trying to sell your home and somebody's got a yard sale that's obviously set up and just covered over with sheets or whatever you know until Saturday and Sunday um, that's kind of where this was yes. coming from with our joint planning commission. I'm sitting here thinking I live in the poor section because we don't have anything extra to say. <laughs> we don't have yard sale. We have some issues talking to uh, Commissioner Smith about if you're going to do it year round rezone right? I think that's, that's, that makes sense. If you're going to be a business, you have to zone it mm -hmm. in. Business. Yeah. It's good for cleaning out your garage a couple of times a year, you know, downsizing or whatever. And, and I am not going to clean up my garage. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Okay. It, any more questions or comments on this? We've got a motion on the floor. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. thank you. Okay, under new business, um, approval of tax collector's annual settlement, Ms. Yow. Good evening. Good evening. Here tonight to present the um, annual settlement. And then first of all, I'd like to thank um, the board and administration for your support of the tax department in the past year. We've worked hard and we've been pretty successful this year. I'd also um, like to acknowledge the effort of the staff that um, I work with and the great job that they've done, <coughs> in not just in collections, but in the entire department. Um, so you have some documents in front of you. First one is an affidavit. And basically th this just shows um, the taxes that were levied collected and what's remaining uncollected. And we broke this down for you by category. So you can see the personal property um, collections rate was 99.06 this year. And I can tell you that's a very good rate for personal property. Uh, for real property, we were at 98.92% collected and utilities we were at 100% collected. So our overall collection for the year 98.97% and this is up from last year. The next document uh, just references the report 
that I provided of um, the detail of the uncollected taxes that was made available to you and um, supplied to the clerk as well, showing the uh, outstanding property tax that was not collected for the fiscal year. And then you have a chart that shows um, the collection rate historically. And then finally, um, no, not finally, you have a resolution um, that we're asking you to approve, accepting the annual settlement for fiscal years 2016 and prior years. And then you have an order. Um, this order allows me to uh, begin collections of the current year taxes, which are in the mail. You probably got yours. Got them now. Yes. <laughs> well, they went out last week. And um, so this is the order that we can collect those taxes and use any uh, enforcement remedies that are available to us to do so. Okay. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. Do you have any idea why the collection rate has improved so much? Well, we've worked really hard. Right, which that's not in the settlement because I don't collect that. But, um, Right. Is it the economy in Lee County is turning around? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would mostly accept the settlement, adopt the resolution, and charge the tax collector for collecting the 2016 tax. Okay. Now, do we need separate motions for that, or can we do it all in one? It's all in one. It's all in one. Okay. No, just make sure. Okay. All right. <coughs> so there's a motion on the floor. Any more questions or discussion? Very good job. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. And we'll pass that along to staff. Please. Thank you. Well, leadership. Well, good leadership. Thank you. Um, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. I'm in, it's rare I'm in the building and I run into people and like, what are you doing here? Oh, I've been up to the tax office, and they have a smile on their face, and, you know, and they've been treated well, and and um, that's that's a testament to your leadership and your staff, definitely. Um, okay, um, the next item, uh, information on sale of property located on 109 3rd Street. Ms. Parrish? Yeah, um, that is, it's actually South 3rd Street. I thought that's not terrible on that. Um, but I had received an email about what the status of the property was, and May or may not remember, but it went into foreclosure sale, and at that time, on August 28, 2015, the county and the city became the uh, highest bidders at $6,883.50. At that time, an individual, Mr. Charles Brown, had contacted the county about assigning his, the bid to him. Um, that bid was placed on the November 2, 2015 Board of Commissioners meeting, and if y'all recall, at that time, um, the item was deferred because it was also in front of the city, and the city deferred their um, action as well. In the meantime, two other individuals contacted about having the bid assigned to them, Cecil Williams and Mr. Anthony Hall. Um, I contacted the city attorney and found out that there had been discussions with the previous county attorney and Mr. Yarbrough, um, and it was deemed at that time that the appropriate thing to do in this matter would be to um, move forward with the foreclosure process and then let the bid process um, sure. yeah, start. So that's what we just plan on doing. That's a pr bid process where it just, you know, does the highest bid and where the highest bid is gets it or do they it'll fight work, amongst themselves for a while? It'll work with like the, um, the county selling that surplus property. So the bid will come in and we'll have to advertise it and then have time period for upset bid. Sure. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, upset bid process. Yeah. Any questions or comments or motion? Okay. And I believe the city is doing the same thing. I'm talking to the city attorney. There's information on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Information. I'm sorry. You're right. <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Item C. Um, oh, voting delegate for the NCACC annual conference in Forsyth County. I guess that's. Uh, Dr. Frazier and I will be going. So, pleasure of the board. 
as to who will vote to represent our board at the state convention. You know that we have named the Rumpels to our the Rumpels to our voting delegate. I don't want to sit through the long business meeting. You, you got <laughs> <laughs> Get all the information and read everything. <laughs> Okay, any comments or questions on that? <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. And as you get information that, that will be uh, in August, um, please feel free to email me or text or call with your concerns and issues, and I will pass them along on behalf of our board. Where's it going to be held? In uh, Winston Salem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, by the way, yes, sir. Would you mind making a note? I'd like to get an update on the water filter testing. Uh, either right. John or right. It, right. Okay. We will have it for the next meeting. Right. Okay. All right. Um, item D, budget amendment. Uh, Mr. Crampton. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I'm filling in for uh, Ms. Mentor, who was at a conference this week. So uh, the first budget, this budget amendment is 180,000 for the broadband telecommunications uh, project with Randolph tele, uh, Telecommunications. We're also rolling over $43,600 for projects not completed. Um, most of those projects are in parks and recreation. If you've looked at Dar Ripple Park, you know, there's a lot going on over there right now, so that's pretty much work in progress. There's also $37,465 for Duke Progress monies that we received that help um, low-income folks with heating and cooling emergencies. Okay. That's it. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Madam Chair, just a question yes, sir. for information. Did you receive any comments? Communications from the state medical examiner's office regarding the building issue? Mm -hmm. I have not received any yet, um, but I did talk with Ms. Minter about that last week. I think she may have had some communication um, about it. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll be back. <laughs> she'll be back Thursday, I think. I think she'll be here Thursday. I will have her call you, Mr. Smith. But I, I know that I think she was contacted. I don't remember what it entailed. Well, I got to meet with the State Department of Health and Human Services uh, Secretary. He transferred it to Dr. Williams. So Dr. Williams texted me on Saturday and wanted to know if there was a resolution. I didn't have any answers. So there are other counties that, from what I understand, that have also had the same concern. Okay. Madam Chair? Oh, sorry. Did you have? I was going to say, she has spoken with me about it as well. We've been uh, discussed it last week, but I don't remember if she had Closed the room. Right, sure, absolutely. Yes, sir. I'd like to approve the budget amendment. So, 181602. I'm sorry. You made a motion to approve the budget amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the, okay, we've got time. Um, the additional item, item E, um, I, was contacted um, by several people in the community um, wanting to um, have some type of community discussion after the um, um, murders of the police officers in Dallas. Uh, you know, and didn't think we'd be here already talking about another situation so soon if ever unfortunately um, in Baton Rouge so uh, I, um, a young man his name is Solomon McCauley and I don't know how many of our board members he's spoken with he's tried to get up with several of us um, but he is trying to kind of get this together to be a community discussion um, forum type thing um, as he said to be proactive rather than reactive um, he has contacted 
uh, Ms. Margaret Markerson about being a moderator, but Margaret, I think, wanted to be more of a participant was what he said, and so she was gonna work on getting a moderator. And um, he had spoken with um, Carlton Miles with our Sheriff's Department, and he was gonna coordinate security at courtroom four. He had spoken with Susie Thomas, and the dates of August the 2nd and August the 4th were available, thinking maybe 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening. Um, he's also reached out to the mayors and um, uh, elected officials in, in Broadway and Sanford. Um, and, you know, he wants it very structured, very organized, um, but, but, but just to have a dialogue on a forum type thing and asked me to bring it to this board because I told him I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't what speak for this board. Uh, the, um, he has talked to representatives from their office and they're, they're the wanting sheriff to told me that he, he, he wanted to be there. Right. Yeah, he on being there. And I think the mayor, you know, <laughs> And I think the and I think you know um, the the mayor um, of of uh, Broadway and Sanford were working with their uh, police as well. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if there are commitments from them yet, you know. But um, again, I I talked with Mr. McCauley. I believe Friday morning was the last time I spoke with him, and um, you know, and I told him I couldn't speak for our members of this board's participation. You know, he was just sort of asking for. Um, support for the endeavor and um, I think it's just race relations you know communication open dialogue um, and support of the police officers and and hearing concerns from the community well, he, he called it a town on the second of August that's going I think his preference was the fourth because of that. Um, um, I know there was some discussion um, that maybe there would be some kind of vigil after the night out. No, this was not from this young man, but from other people. I'm talking about some type of vigil after the night out at the different places to come to one place. I don't know how that would work because usually people were cleaning up from their neighborhood national night out areas. Um, when I spoke with him, he obviously preferred the fourth, um, and I think maybe the ninth was another date that he gave. Um, but his fourth was his preference because he said that was within the national night out week. You know, so everybody still had sort of that um, theme in mind of supporting our law enforcement officials and, and community. Well, I'd like to hear from the sheriff and the chief and see what, what they have yeah. learned about this request. I mean, I just don't know enough about what is the question. Yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes, situation. I, I was gonna say, sure. when you don't have a situation, you may yeah. develop it. Sure, sure. So I'd like to know more about how it's structured and what the intent is. Well, I know in, initially after the Dallas situation happened, um, I, I ran into Mayor Mann at a ribbon cutting. You know, we're having a lot of those lately, and that's a good thing. Um, but um, we, we discussed possibly, you know, just having um, a round table between, um, you know, the two mayors and myself and the sheriff. Uh, and the chiefs yeah. and and just have a sort of a more intimate discussion and then trying to put together a community meeting um, and and this young man has just you know stepped out in the forefront and um, so okay I mean I'll, I'll I'll get back with the sheriff and and the chiefs and the see uh, this past to use the courthouse grounds um, late last week and you know, the, you know when anybody um, 
request to use the grounds. You know, it's a public facility, and as long as the, the sheriff knows about it on the weekend, you know, they can use the grounds as long as they stay on the county property. They can't get on the city street or the city um, sidewalk without a permit for, mm -hmm. for gathering like that. But they can, you know, under North Carolina jail statute, they can come on the courthouse grounds and, and rally and do whatever they want to do. Um, so they asked, they asked, uh, they didn't really ask permission. They basically, you know, I was basically told they were going to do it. And I just said, just make sure you have a security plan. And they talked to the sheriff and, um, you know, they were, they had a couple people out there, you know, with them. So I think there was like 50 people out there. So. Okay. And, well, and, and I'm not complaining about that. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that the interview was from a person in Carney, a person in Carney County. And we may not have the same issues. Oh, absolutely. So, okay, well, again, that, I mean, I didn't want to vote or anything, but he just asked me to bring it to the board, so um, just to get your feedback and your opinion, and I'll be talking with the sheriff um, and, and the chiefs um, and, and their staff to um, see, and we'll be in contact, you know, if they set a date for that meeting. Okay, um, do we want to take a five minute break before we go into the public hearings? All right. Okay. Take a, okay, call the meeting back to order and uh, we'll begin um, with the public hearing to consider amendment to the temporary moratorium on oil and gas development and mining within Lee County. And I defer to Mr. Crompton and Ms. Parrish. Yes, ma'am, I'll just give a quick introduction. Okay. At the June 20th commissioner's meeting, the board approved in a public hearing during the July uh, meeting to consider an amendment to the temporary moratorium on oil and gas development and mining within Lee County. The specific amendment changed section 12-110, it's called limitation on moratorium, and the, mor and the change says the following, any existing permitting mining quarry which wants to expand its activity, its activity to an adjacent area um, this would now be an exception, and they would be allowed to come forward with a um, application for for a modification of their permit, existing permit. So we've properly advertised the um, hearing, and I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Whitney can have, answer any questions. Any, any questions before we open the public hearing? Okay, I'll open the public hearing as described. Anyone wish to speak in favor of the um, amendment? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners, Manager Crumpton. My name is Tom Oxholm. I'm a Vice President with Wake Stone Corporation. We operate the quarry that's shown on the screen and have since 1974. We came, when I talked to the planning department earlier this year, we were unaware that there had been a moratorium put in place. The parcel that's highlighted in yellow um, is four acres that we purchased from uh, Ms. Viola Shaw back in 2003. We came before you at that time to rezone that parcel to allow us to build an earthen berm to buffer the neighbors that are on to the uh, west side there. They're just a few residential neighbors. Uh, she lived in the house in the red square and she continued to live there until 2015, when she then vacated and actually moved out to the house that says Jacobs Leroy. That's where her mother had been living. We tore down the house on the Red Square and then were wanting to rezone that one acre to allow the same usage as the yellow. And unfortunately, couldn't access the yellow safely without having the Red Square. So that's what delayed our opportunity here. What brings it to the forefront now is that the land that shows with the word quarry on it is now, a, a photo's a little outdated, it's now been stripped and cleared for the opening of a second pit. When we do that, we have a lot of overburden we have to move. That's expensive. We don't want to move it more than once. So we're looking for any site that we could use to allow us to build an earthen berm. So, and to picture that, if you're, if you're not picturing it clearly, is typically something that's about 30 feet high. Um, and then it is wide as you can make it on a slope that's no more than two to one. So once it's established, then it's seeded and planted with grasses and trees and becomes a very nice buffer for noise, dust, any 
uh, discomforts from the neighborhood. So that's all we're trying to do. And Ms. Thompson informed me we're back before you, and we really appreciate your willingness to consider amending a moratorium that I know is very sensitive in this community. But without that, it will create quite a problem for us as to where to move this dirt to. Thank you. Speak in favor? Anyone speaking against? Okay, I'll declare the public hearing over. And moving. Madam Chair, I move to uh, approve the amendment from number one to the more on the ordinance. Okay. Any discussions or questions? Okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Next item for business is um, the county, well, no, I'm sorry. Yes, the financial report, and I'm I'm, I'm looking for Lisa. <laughs> it's just old habit. <laughs> Sorry, yes, ma'am. Ma Sorry. <laughs> I'm playing the finance officer again tonight. Sorry. It brings back memories of '92 and '93 when I used to have to do what she did. So, um, before you have the uh, financial report for the period ending June 30th, um, I'd like to remind uh, the board that. Not all revenues are received yet. We still have two months of sales tax revenues and some <coughs> restricted intergovernmental and unrestricted intergovernmental fees and uh, funds to receive. So even though it, we look a little out of balance because most of our expenditures have been recognized, uh, we feel like right now we're, in, we're ended the year in a pretty good position. And uh, in a couple of months, we'll, we'll know exactly where we finished as the rest of the revenues come in. Um, but uh, all the departments are under budget and we felt pretty good about it. They have to answer any questions. Just a note. Yes, sir. I noticed that the uh, first payments at the year in June 20th, June 30th, 2015, and the second table said for the year ending June 30th, 2015. So I'll I, I, I see that. <laughs> and I, I will, I will have to get reprimanded for that. <laughs> not catching that. We, Don't worry. We knew I'll what be you having mean. a conversation on Thursday. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> we knew it. <laughs> well, obviously, I did not slip that by you. <laughs> that, um, that's a good report. On page 89, is starts the sales tax report, and uh, you know. Based on our projection, um, we're at 80, 83 to 84% dependent upon the article. Um, and in totality, we're right around 83%. So, um, you know, we look very good as a percent of our budget received. We're at 87%. So, um, we have had a good year in sales tax. Um, if you look at page 90, uh, the April. Um, of 1.5 million in totality was our best April in years. I mean, and it's not even close. So the last two months, March and April, have been very big months. So the economy looks strong in Lee County right now. There's a lot of red, uh, retail growth in the stores are opening. So County Manager's report. Yes, ma'am. The uh, San Lee Park uh, the contract is almost finalized. It just requires the uh, chairman's signature on that tonight. And uh, we'll issue a notice to proceed by the end of the week. And we hope to have the contractors on site uh, August 1st. So from that point forward, 240 days. And we're pretty excited about that. Completion date, 230 days from award. 240. Got a penalty in there? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
question. Good question. I can't remember the exact number per day, but there is a per day. <laughs> when did they ask you? Sir, it's in the old bo uh, the uh, old bowling alley. Uh, the state buildings has approved the drawings and plans, and uh, we're now getting ready to have those plans reviewed by inspections, and we hope to have this out to bid in the next 30 days. So I think that looks pretty good. John, have you had any more conversations with the parties involved? Uh, no, okay. I have not. Just, all right, just make sure. I have not. Okay. Uh, we've had, we've had some, we've had some discussions about, uh, you know, other alternatives, and we're listening. But, okay. you know, um, we still think our original plan is is the right one. So we'll see what happens. Okay. We've had, um, and I'm sure you all have seen it, we've had several complaints about uh, citizens and employees concerning the parking at the government center here. Um, there's a alleyway on the other side of Hillcrest. It's actually a road. Mm -hmm. And the county actually um, owns the road right away. We're not really supposed to own roads. But we can, add, we can petition to close that road and we'll get half of the road and uh, the property owners on the other side, which is David McGlam, uh, would get the other half. And uh, our proposal would be to create a new driveway there on the other side of Hillcrest and create some parking on the other side of Hillcrest to try to get some of the uh, cult staff out of the parking lot over here and eliminate some of the congestion. So we're reviewing that, but the first thing we have to do is close the road. So next month we'll be bringing that petition before you um, along those lines, one of the things that I've noticed when I'm over here with meetings is the, the, the houses here that have businesses in them, they have people, park, pe people parking in our parking lot. Um, I, we have discussed asking, uh, having the board pass an ordinance that would allow us to tow people from the parking lot. Have, have they? Have, but have we haven't pulled the trigger on that because we didn't think that was very uh, appropriate. Yeah, and we it's not neighborly, but have, have, it's have not they, neighborly have at all. Sent them a letter. <laughs> but, yeah, we have talked yeah. to them. We and, have uh, okay. asked them actually to use the upper parking lot because there's a gate in the back that right. goes into their property. Right. But for some reason they like they like parking right there in our visitors' parking spots. So. And I've noticed it's like the, the second, third, and fourth ones, like from the handicapped. So, I mean, yeah, they're just right there. They get the, they get the good ones, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wondered if we had sent something in writing to them. Uh, no, I think we're going to. And then if, if we, that doesn't uh, take care of things, then I'll maybe back to the board to ask. You know, it's just to put signs out there that really visitor parking should be limited as far as time you know, two, three hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody really has business in this building. It's gonna be more than two hours. I don't, I don't think anybody in the health department or DSS is here, you know, longer than two or three hours. So okay. I think we, you know, we can always start chalking tires and taking care of things, so. But I think in the interim, the best thing to do is, is you know, we can create some space with Colt. Okay, thank you. Over there. Um, upcoming meetings, August 11th through the 14th, uh, the uh, NCACC meeting in Forsyth County. August 15th is our next meeting, and then September 19th is commissioner's meeting. And I guess the last thing I'm informing the board is the neighborhood over here by the Summit Building. I sent you an email. Um, they've asked to use the parking lot at the Summit Building for the National Night Out. They've done it in the past and it makes a, a good location for the neighborhood and I just went ahead and told them they could do that. So that's another location for, for folks to go to on that night. Okay. All right, any more questions for any of the managers? Okay, commissioner's comments, commissioner's name. Just to uh, reiterate what I said earlier, that we are in a time where law enforcement is not a target
hard to ditto those um, sentiments and, and statement. I um, also want the people to remember those who was murdered in our own county, our own city, and pray for those, those um, victims and also sellers. Still won't talk green and clean. <laughs> uh, to get you a T-shirt, May. I had a conversation with the manager. Uh, and, you know, the, I'm, I'm, I think I brought this up before, but a hill a month or so ago, I came down 78, Trumway Road. Someone had lost all their garbage off the back of the pickup. It was out there in the road for a couple of days. I mean, it's an awful sight. You know, no one to clean it up, and I. I asked the county manager, how about us looking at the idea of maybe keeping a couple of, putting some inmates on the payroll with the uh, Joe to be where if we need to call them to go clean up a mess like that, we got someone to go clean it up. Um, I'd still like them to look into that and bring back some kind of proposal to this board about the best way to do it. Uh, we are working on that. Commissioner uh, Odom, um, maybe that some of our community persons would take the approach that uh, that uh, the team, it's a motorcycle team from Sanford. I'm a part of it. I'm the clergy of that of that team. And what we've done, we adopted the highway from Plank Road, for, from 42 down to Gillum Road, and we have another group that's going to adopt to the end of that road. And so we have that adopted now, so it's the team. They are a group, or, well, we are a group that we give scholarships to, to deserving students at the end of the year. And so, uh, so we adopted a road in honor of one of the team members of that group who had a car accident and, and gotten killed. And so uh, we named that after him, Marvin Lee, Marvin Knowledge Lee. And so we adopted that. So we got other people who are going to do the same. So when you come down 42, off of 42 on the South Plank, you will see that there will be no debris or anything on that highway. That's great. You know, that's what I want to do to get people interested in keeping trash off the road. Uh, I ran into a little hitch trying to adopt the section we were talking about adopting. And I got to ask this question if we do that, you know, the inmates, I think they do it once a month. Maybe, and by adopt the highway program, you only require to do it. I think three times a year. I said, well, I don't want to lose that once a month. Yeah, it's so quarterly. Yes. I asked the Department of Transportation about that, and of course, the answer to me was, well, I know Sarah, the maintenance supervisor here. That, you know, if I asked her, she would probably continue to do it. They'd continue to do it, but I think what we're going to do is. You'll see how this thing works out with the county manager, and if uh, you know if it doesn't, then we'll. I got some folks in my area that are a little bit afraid of traffic on 42 uh, out there on Steel Bridge Road. That, that they drive fast, and it, it is dangerous. So we're gonna wait and see what happens. With this. You said earlier only poor folk live over there, so there ain't no trash over there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Joe Mathis told me it was a poor out there. Turkey had to lean up against the fence to gobble. <laughs> I need to ride out there and check on that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, along those lines, too, Doc, um, Terrica Luxton from Ely, um, you know, she's spoken before us several times. She sent me some information that I've been working on. Um, there, there's a program through the schools, you know, we talked mm -hmm. about. Um, you know, when when Tim and I were going through school, um, you know, that, that was all the rage, you know, was environmentally friendly and adopt the highway and that kind of thing, and it sort of fell off in the 80s. Um, but I think they've dusted that program off again, and, and I have been talking to some of my teacher friends that are out for the summer to see if they'd be interested in implementing that in their schools, and, you know, especially the middle schools are starting to have science clubs now and that type of thing. So hopefully we, and, and they, um, they do service projects um, 
you know, so I know we picked up our fair share of trash for Beta Club and that kind of thing. So, you know, hopefully we can um, work through the schools once they get cranked back up, which, believe it or not, is ne end, end of next month. Um, and, well, Tramway um, starting already. So, okay. Um, Commissioner Reed? Um, just a couple of brief things um, for me. Uh, I, I apologize um, to the board Friday before last for sending you very late night text, um, but I do want to say publicly thank you to Ms. Potts and her staff um, Friday before last. Um, uh, I, I received, well, we all received a troubling email from an individual about a child that might be in imminent danger. Um, and Ms. Potts was, as she always is, the consummate professional and was on top of things and had the child, um, you know, had things checked out and, and made sure she was okay. Um, it's a complicated situation, but I appreciate very much on a Friday, we were talking back and forth, I think, till 10 or 10.30 Friday night, and then and that's why I had to get up with you guys so late, but um, I know um, she was all on all of our minds if she was okay, so we've got a great staff in DSS, yes. and I appreciate that. Um, and um, also just say a prayer. Most of you know I do not like to fly, so I will be headed to the NACO conference <laughs> tomorrow on the West Coast. The train trip that I looked into was going to take me five days to get there, so that was not very, you know, uh, that was not very um, time um, efficient. So just pray for traveling mercies for me. Um, Bloody Marys. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, but uh, it's... it's um, we we, um, we had a great agenda to start with, um, and and now that has sort of morphed into um, additional agenda items with the police safety and emergency responders. Uh, there, there's going to be some special meetings on that, so I am extra glad that I'm going to be going out there for those discussions, um, uh, and we'll be uh, Thursday I'll be meeting with the International Economic Development Task Force um, trying to get some jobs here into North Carolina and then we'll be going to the port for a all day tour well a half day tour on Sunday and meet with businesses out there as well um, so um, Bob Joyce has a packet of goodies for me to take with me uh, from Saga and the Chamber um, so you know hopefully hopefully something good will come out of that I'll, I'll Sell Lee County as hard as I can. Um, but if you uh, think of anything or you see anything in any of the NACO updates that I know we all get um, on our email, please let me know and I'll be happy to speak to those on behalf of the board while we're out there. I, um, it's going to be an interesting time out there this week. All right. Anything else from anyone? Move to adjourn. All right. Thank you very much. Everybody have a safe week. Take care. Thank you. All right, well, uh, all those in favor, say aye. aye. Uh, I, I can see it in your eyes.